Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending uh, Protein Industries Canada um, capacity building webinar. We are excited to introduce you to our uh, new program. Um, my name is Carson Sinclair. I'm the program development or program coordinator, sorry. And uh, with me today is Camilla Jerger, our ecosystem development manager. Um, we will just quickly go through an overview of um, what we're going to run through today. So we've quickly gone through some welcome and introductions. Um, I will give you a brief breakdown on navigating some of the webinar tools and some of the features you can use to interact with us today. Uh, Camilla will then take us through an introduction to PIC um, and the introduction to PIC's capacity building priorities. Um, she will overview the program um, and then we will get into some of the frequently asked questions that we um, have established so far. Um, Camille will then lead us through the next steps of the program and then follow it all up with the Q&A session near the end. Um, so to start us off here, um, just to navigate the features of Zoom webinar today, um, on most devices, on computers, that black bar will be at the bottom of your screen if you're on a tablet or a uh, mobile device, it, I believe it is at the top of your screen. Um, there is the audio settings button on the left there. You can obviously use this to help with any audio issues you may be having. Um, start there and if, if anything is, is uh, still not working, you can use the chat function to uh, message myself and I will be here to help you uh, try and get anything uh, sorted out that we can. Um, there is the Q&A function which we will use for the Q&A at the end of the presentation, but um, we do ask that if you have questions throughout the presentation, you, you post them here. Um, and there is a upvoting feature, which looks like a thumbs up. You will see when people are um, asking questions within the Q&A feature. Um, this will help uh, put questions to the top of the list and help us curate the most important questions to answer. So if you notice that somebody has asked a question, you also would like the answer to if you select that thumbs up. Uh, we will be able to uh, get to those questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, and so without further ado, I'd like to pass it over to Camilla and uh, she will take it away with giving a brief overview of who is Protein Industries Canada. Thanks, Carson. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Camilla Jerger and I'm the Ecosystem Development Manager with Protein Industries Canada. Thanks again for attending this webinar. Um, I'd like to start by saying that the slides that we're presenting today will be shared after the presentation. There's quite a bit of information on the slides as they're supposed to provide more details to you about our strategy and about our program. So please don't worry about reading everything and really focus on the presentation. Um, the objective today of this introductory session is to provide you with some basic information about our capacity building program. Right now, we're at the final stages of developing the program, and we wanted to give you a high-level update. So your questions today and the feedback we receive will help us with the final details, um, and we'll be also um, launching our materials with full details um, soon. Hopefully, we'll be able to answer your questions today, but if not, uh, you can rest assured that we'll be taking them into consideration on our program guide as we get everything uh, fleshed out. Um, I'd like to start with an overview of Protein Industries Canada. I know most of you are familiar with our um, organization, but I think it's always good to bring an update about PIC. <clears throat> um, so PIC is a member-based um, industry-led organization that is one of the five innovation superclusters. Um, our goal is to co-invest um, $300 million in, uh, to grow the plant protein sector over the next four years and developing a last plant, plant, plant protein ecosystem. So today we have about 190 members uh, from all parts of the agri-food value chain and growing. Um, if you are um, not a PIC member, please consider joining us. Um, our contact information will be shared at the end of the presentation in case you want to know more. <clears throat> um, Protein Industries Canada is the catalyst that drives innovation between trailblazers to realize Canada's agri-food potential. Collaboration is really at the heart of what we do, and an important part of our work is to make sure that um, industry is thinking bold and doing business differently. Uh, why is that? It's because 
as we believe that doing business differently will spur um, innovation. So we're all about creating connections and inspiring collaboration. Um, our mission and vision uh, is, um, so our vision is to Canada to be, um, one second, sorry, just moving here, to be um, Canada's a world leader in plant protein. Um, and our mission is to invest collaboratively collaboratively um, to accelerate innovation and the competitiveness of the Canadian plant protein sector. Um, our objectives are to increase value-added production of plant protein-based products and co-products uh, by developing new technologies and processes, grow processing close to production, remove industry-wide barriers, resolve challenges, and increase capacity across the value chain. And um, where we're going. Uh, so by 2035, um, we, we would like to uh, add an additional $10 billion in annual incremental value to Canadian produced crops, uh, move Canada to fifth, uh, I believe for an hour eight um, in global agri-food exports and establish Canada as an internationally uh, recognized plant protein cluster uh, to be a magnet for talent and investment. And for us, uh, success, success looks like no seed um, shipped whole. Um, so as many of you may be aware, um, PIC has two investment streams, technology and capacity building. Uh, the technology stream is the one that you may be more um, familiar with, and it supports um, innovation and the creation of new products, technologies and services to the agri-food processing sector. Technology co corresponds to the majority of PIC's funding. Uh, we have successfully launched three technology project calls to date, and we have one call open right now. Uh, more details can also be found on our website. Capacity building, which is the focus of this session, um, encompasses projects that are foundational and transformation, transformational to bring capacity to our sector and to enable technology projects to move forward and Canada to be more competitive. So the capacity building program has the following objectives, uh, as you can see on the screen, um, help create a competitive and sustainable business environment, incent new approaches to doing business within the sector and build capacity in the sector. So at this point, I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions, feel free to submit uh, through the chat feature, as Carson mentioned before, uh, we'll be uh, addressing them at the end. So before I start talking about our program um, and how it's going to work, I'd like to talk a bit about our capacity building strategy. So it's key that potential project proponents understand our strategy, our goals, and our outcomes, um, as projects need to be aligned with our strategic priorities and what we're looking to accomplish as a sector. So our capacity building program is focused on supporting growth and help building capacity in the sector. Uh, earlier this year, uh, PIC um, organized a few sessions um, to gather feedback from industry, we had about 130 stakeholders um, across the prairies that helped um, validate our capacity building strategy. Um, there is a final report on these sessions if you haven't seen that yet, um, and you can find that on our website. Um, for PIC, um, collaboration is key to build capacity in the agri-food sector and make sure we realize Canada's full potential. Uh, we cannot do it alone, uh, so we need delivery partners to bring forward projects that will transform our industry. And that's why we are here today. So um, we have a few um, priority areas that we, we've um, established. Um, and we have, uh, we, we base, we pretty much based on seven priorities. Probably if you attended some of our workshops or seeing a few uh, posts on social media, you probably seen either eight priorities or six priorities. Um, and we actually landed on seven priorities. I will be explaining them a little bit more. Uh, what we did was um, indigenous, which was one of the key priority areas. We actually believe that it's so important that needs to be included in everything. So we um, included that on our project criteria. Uh, and I'll be talking more about that um, uh, shortly. And also when we did our workshop sessions, if you participated, we kind of grouped um, IP and data, and I'll be talking more about that in a minute, um, just for the sake of you know, shortening um, 
our sessions, but um, in the end, we, we, we landed on seven priority areas. So um, our, our priorities is really um, to, to areas that where we see gaps and opportunities and where our industry partners can make a difference bringing transformational projects. And as I said, I'll be talking to about each of them. <clears throat> Um, I'll be um, speaking, repeating this a few times, but um, it's important to make sure that our project partners and stakeholders understand that our capacity building program is not looking to duplicate work that is already being done, uh, but leverage uh, such work um, whenever possible. So, and we cannot, as I said before, we cannot deliver um, capacity building without having the whole industry together collaborating on projects. Um, I wanted to remind you uh, that we'll be sharing the slides. So I know it's a lot of text. The, the next block of slides will be quite a bit of uh, text heavy, but um, we wanted to bring the top level goals and desired outcomes for each of the seven priorities. Uh, so um, you have that material afterwards, but uh, we're not expecting you to read all the slides. Um, we'll be sharing this as a resource after. So I'd like to start with um, labor, skills, and access to talent as one of our key priorities. Uh, this priority focus is, um, focuses on addressing the cr chronic shortage of labor in the agri-food sector that you might be all familiar with. Um, the shortage um, of labor today and in the future has become of one of the most pressing barriers to growth. And if not addressed, uh, it will influence Canada's ability to realize our agri-food potential and limiting investment and expansion by industry. Um, I'm not going to go through all the goals and desired outcomes, as I said, but um, the most important thing to keep in mind is that our focus is to address the shortage of, shortage of labor, be it by coordinating efforts between private sector and academia to make sure students have the right skills for the future, making sure that the agri-food sector is considered as a career, um, and identifying ways to grow our talent pool. Um, regulatory um, is another priority that has been consistently ranked as a top concern by industry. As we invest in technologies that result in new products and processes, our regulatory system must keep pace with innovation. Um, and without a responsible regulatory system, our ability to get products to market, uh, attract investment and grow the sector is impacted. So it's not only about removing the immediate regulatory barriers is about creating and implementing processes that allow regulations to evolve as the sector uh, does and, and while maintaining the highest standards of safety. Um, again, I will, I will not be going through uh, the goals and outcomes, but uh, we're leaving this as a resource for you um, afterwards. In regards to access to capital, uh, we know that less than 3% of venture capital investment flows into the prairie region, uh, and only a fraction of that is targeted to the agriculture and food processing sector. Uh, access to capital is considered uh, number one priority by industry in some consultations we've um, organized um, in the past. And um, we hear uh, repeatedly that accessing financing of all types, um, not only venture capital, from banks to VC firms uh, was one of the largest challenges facing our members. In addition, uh, feedback from lenders uh, is that some businesses in the agri-food sector are not viewed as sophisticated when compared to other sectors. So one area that we started working um, on access to capital is on education, both to companies, so they know how to pitch and understand sources of funding, but also to lenders, such as VC firms, so they understand the agri-food sector, um, its challenges and opportunities. Um, in terms of global brand and international engagement, uh, Canada currently enjoys a very competitive advantage um, as an environmentally sustainable source of agricultural commodities. Um, we have world-class innovative producers, uh, but industry faces um, challenges in this area as well. So reliability of supply, um, putting, putting forward our, our um, global reputation, telling our story, um, and lack of a global recognition as a supplier of protein-rich food ingredients. Uh, so we need to invest in these areas to improve Canada's global brand um, as a food and ingredient supplier 
and to tell our sustainability um, um, and reliability story, story better. So we just finished developing um, an international engagement strategy, which will be also published within the next few weeks on our website. And we've been working very closely on this priority with um, partners such as Global Affairs Canada uh, on missions and events. Um, now a lot of things move to virtual um, and we are adapting and adjusting to that a new reality. Uh, but this is one of the example of the work we've been doing. Um, infrastructure is one priority that I really like to explain as it can mean something different to every stakeholder that we talk to. Um, our infrastructure priority is mostly focused on R&D infrastructure to make sure that agri-food companies understand the, valuable, the available resources and are able to utilize them fully um, to develop innovation. So one comment um, that we hear Frequent, frequently is that organizations don't always know where to look for support or who has the capabilities uh, or production capacity. Um, managing data and further um, leveraging it to improve processes and make decisions is key to advancing the agri-food sector. The opportunity around data um, is regarding precision agriculture, improved production techniques, regulations, supporting our sustainability story, and providing customers with the information they are requesting are all part of the evolving um, agri-food ecosystem. The challenge with data uh, that we see is that a lot of agriculture data is not digitized, and organizations seem to have a challenge to understand that data is often a path to solution. Uh, we have at PIC, we have um, a data strategy as well. And um, we, we definitely see this, see data as um, an enabler um, to all the other priorities. Um, in regards to intellectual property, um, IP is a cornerstone of innovation. And we know that Canada is a country of inventors. Uh, we have strong scientific, scientific capacity uh, that leads to the creation of new knowledge and technologies. But we lag other uh, industrialized nations in our ability to realize the value of IP. So education to companies in IP is a key focus of the, this priority. And we've done some work um, on this um, for the past uh, year and a half. And finally, as I mentioned before, um, I, I wanted to bring it up again, um, indigenous engagement. Um, as I mentioned before, we did not include indigenous on the graph on the first um, slide about the priorities, because we see that this is a part of, um, every, it, first it's a part of our project criteria, but it's a part of everything that we do in all priorities. It should be considered in, in all the priorities that I mentioned before. So um, we see it playing a key role in many other priorities and projects. And um, we are, we're also um, considering other underrepresented uh, populations as well. So um, moving to our capacity building program, which I think is uh, what everybody here wants to, to hear more about. Um, as I mentioned before, today's supposed to be a kind of a high level discussion on what the program will look like um, since we're at the final stages of developing our guidelines. We're gonna be holding another session, another webinar once we launch the program guide. So um, to update you all the details and really walk through you the process in detail. Um, just another reminder, please submit your questions throughout the chat box if you have any. Uh, we're gonna be answering them live um, at the end of the session or through the chat. So I know this is a busy slide, but I wanted to give you an update of the kind of the whole process as we're seeing it. Uh, this is a quick chart of our capacity building process. Um, it all starts is with a call for proposals. Uh, we're planning to do this call on June 22nd. Um, this date is probably set, but you know it might change depending on some uh, depending on, on how, how things go. Uh, as I said, you know, we want to incorporate your feedback um, on our um, on our program guide as well. So um, we're gonna have, the call is gonna have more details on the specific outcomes we're looking for and the full eligibility criteria. Uh, project proponents will be submitting project applications based on that criteria. 
Um, and I'd like to highlight the, the whole process, and that's why I added the talk to us before applying, is a very iterate, iterative process. Um, we, we like to hear from you right from the start, right from your idea, so we can work with you to um, identify project partners, uh, work with you on, your, on the application um, package, and so on. Um, it's really important to talk to us at the early stages so we can help you um, throughout the process. So once you've applied, um, our PIC team will assess um, your project for eligibility and will provide feedback. Um, eligible projects will be sent to PAC, the Project Approval Committee. Um, that is an independent committee uh, and that will evaluate projects based on our um, project selection criteria. I'm going to be talking about the criteria um, in a minute. Um, PAC will then uh, make a recommendation to approve the project or not and will be providing feedback to applicants. Approved projects will sign a contract with PIC, which is the master project um, agreement, um, and we'll have a kickoff meeting to officially start the project. Um, all projects will be reporting on a monthly basis to PIC. I'm pretty sure that at this point, uh, you probably have lots of questions, and we're likely going to address that, but them at the end uh, during the FAQ uh, part, but feel free again to send them through the chat. Um, moving to project um, eligibility, I, I'd like to highlight that these are some of the high level requirements um, and the full list of requirements will be part of our program guide, which will be uh, posted um, soon, shortly on our website. The first requirement um, here is that projects must have two or more partners. This is a very important, um, this is very important to pick because as I mentioned before, collaboration is at the heart of our work. And we see that we will accomplish our goals faster and better if industry works together. Uh, I'm going to be talking soon about um, our project criteria, but we, we assess projects, we give a higher score to projects that have more than two partners. So um, collaboration and, and building a strong consortium is really important. Um, the project must be incremental to the regular business of the proponents. Uh, that means that we're not funding day-to-day -day operations or ongoing activities, for example. It's also important to highlight that PIC is a co-investor on projects and we're expecting industry contribution and product, projects that include industry contribution will be given preference as well. Um, given the reporting requirements, um, larger projects may be subject to an administration fee by PIC, um, the same as we do for technology projects. Uh, we're going to have more details on this when we launch our program guide as well. And I'll be talking more about uh, what types of projects we're looking for um, in the following slides, as well as our project selection criteria. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we will also be giving preference to projects with an indigenous uh, engagement component. Um, a few details and, and more, some more considerations about our capacity uh, building program. So as I mentioned before, it's an iterative process. Ideally, PIC should be starting working with you uh, during the project ideation phase. Um, and we can, as I said, you know, we can help you uh, identify project partners. We can help you, um, you know, check eligibility and see if your project um, fits our criteria. Um, Projects will be on a co-investment basis, uh, meaning industry will invest in the project as well. Um, we're looking to co-invest in transformational projects that are aligned with our priorities, um, goals, and outcomes, and that bring lasting benefits to the sector. And as I said, you know, during the uh, ideation phase, or, or when you have, when you think you have um, a, a project to submit to us, let's let's um, discuss and let's have a conversation so we can. Um, we can we can look into you know if your project is really meeting our um, goals and outcomes. Um, as I mentioned a few times, collaboration is very important to pick. Uh, so you think you should think who you can involve as a project partner, members, subject matter experts, etc. We see that uh, we really want to make sure that um, one, as I said, we're not duplicating uh, projects, duplicating efforts that are already going on. Uh, but we also want to make sure that industry is working together. Um, also consider how your project can be scaled up on a regional or national level. Uh, we're also welcoming multi-year projects. 
Um, another important point to mention is that projects will be funded on a reimbursement model. Um, and more details will be again on the program guide. And we're asking uh, pro project proponents to think bold. This is a very, uh, this is a very good opportunity to really transform us, our sector, and we're very excited about it. In terms of the application package, um, proponents will provide us with an application form answering a few questions about the project and also project plan, which includes a financial workbook containing budget and milestones. Uh, we're going to be posting templates for both documents um, on our website um, when we post our uh, program guide. Um, as I mentioned before, the process of applying for projects should be very iterative uh, right from the beginning. And so please do not wait to talk to us just before or after applying. Talk to us at the early stages. Contact, contact us as soon as you have a project idea and we can help you develop the application package. So um, a question we, we get often is how projects are going to be evaluated. So we have built um, a project selection matrix uh, that we can objectively evaluate projects that are submitted to our program. Uh, the criteria is based on six main areas, uh, and I'll be explaining uh, each as I go. So the first one is uh, projects addresses the issue gaps and delivers objectives, and there is alignment with capacity building priorities and strategy. Uh, I think this is very straightforward. Uh, we, we're really looking um, at projects that are aligned with our strategy, that deliver, uh, that deliver the outcomes and goals that um, I shared a few slides, uh, a few, uh, I shared on a few slides uh, before. Um, and also, I think it's it's really important that um, it it has very clear um, outcomes and, and really addresses um, and de delivers what we're looking for. And trans, you know, we're, we're looking at on the second point, we're looking here at transformational impact on the ecosystem and it benefits the entire ecosystem beyond the applicants. So again, we're looking into uh, foundational transformational uh, projects here. Um, number three is it leverages existing work and node duplication. Um, when probably uh, when I went through the the seven priorities, you probably thought about existing work that are happening that is happening in each of the priorities that I, that I mentioned before. So um, we know that there's lots going on in access to talent, for example. We don't want to be duplicating any any existing work, but we really want to be leveraging what exists and, and building building on it and 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 really bringing again transformational projects. Um, our fourth criteria is the strength of the consortium. Um, so who are the proponents? What is their expertise? What is their leadership? Uh, and what, what's the level of collaboration between the partners? Um, finally, um, timeline, budget, and industry contribution. As I mentioned before, we're looking uh, for uh, into projects that bring also dollars to the table, and we're going to be ranking projects higher uh, on a higher level if they have um, and if they bring industry contribution and um, number six is indigenous engagement. Um, before we move to the FAQ part, I'd like to share with you how PIC can help you before, during and after the application process. I think I mentioned a few times, but it's um, it's good to to bring a kind of a, a reminder. Um, I can't stress enough that we would love to hear from you right from the early stages and discuss your idea and how to move forward as a project. We can help you identify partners, uh, build a consortium, uh, discuss eligibility and how the projects can be scaled up. Uh, we are really here to help you. Um, so please feel free to contact us. Um, we, our job is to really to help projects be successful. Um, and we're also going to be assisting throughout the process, the process to help you build um, the application package. And after your project um, is approved, um, we're going to be assisting with reporting as well. So moving, uh, kind of moving to the final part of this presentation. So I'm going to be going through a few questions um, before we take the questions from the audience. And I think these are probably, this might be covered, uh, cover some of the questions that uh, um, 
you have some of the burning questions that the audience has today. Um, and then I'll finish up also with um, a little bit of a next steps. So first question uh, is what type of projects is PIC, is PIC looking for? So we're looking for collabor collaborative projects that are aligned with the goals of the capacity building program. Um, I mentioned that before, projects must be incremental to normal activity and do not duplicate existing efforts or ongoing work. Um, projects must add value and benefit members across the sector. Um, Preference will be given to projects that can be built um, and scaled up to reflect the growth of the sector and multi-year projects are encouraged. Um, how much will pay commit to projects? So um, approximately 10 to 12% of um, our total project investment will be committed to capacity building projects. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, the projects will be on a reimbursement basis. Uh, on eligible project costs. And again, the eligibility criteria and the eligible project costs will be, um, will be fully described on our program guide when we, when we post it. Um, and as I said before, industry contribution is really expected and is part of our selection criteria. Um, probably um, the other thing I wanted to add here that probably will be a, a question is that how much, what's the percentage uh, that PIC will, will be committing to individual projects? We are looking into uh, about between 40 and 75%. Next question is um, who can submit projects under the capacity building program? Um, as I mentioned on the slide about um, the eligibility, uh, we require a minimum of two project partners, a consortium, uh, and they can include, um, but not limited to industry associations, private companies, not-for-profits, and academia. Um, you must be a PIC member um, to apply for projects and comply with the full eligibility criteria that will be included on the program guide. And the project approval committee, the PAC, uh, will evaluate the project, the proponent's expertise and ability to deliver the project's outcomes and the strength of the collaboration. So uh, this is very important part of our um, project selection criteria. Um, we, we, we often hear uh, the question, uh, why do projects need to have a minimum of two project partners? Um, I think I stressed that enough but I, I throughout this presentation, but I wanted to bring that again, that really the core of the work um, at PIC is really collaboration. So we believe that if industry works together, we get there faster and without duplication of work. Um, there are many organizations today in Canada doing work that is very aligned with capacity building priorities. So we want to leverage such work and build upon it, uh, bringing innovative ways to address gaps in our ecosystem, build capacity so we can uh, Canada can really realize its full agri-food potential. Um, in terms of um, next steps, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, we're going to be incorporating questions and feedback from this webinar into our process. We're at the final stages of building uh, the documents and, and the guidelines. Uh, we are planning to launch the call for proposers in the last week of June. Um, at that time, we're going to be posting, publishing on our website, the capacity building program guide and the application templates. Um, we're gonna be, um, build, we're gonna be uh, developing another webinar, uh, much more detailed and much more uh, um, explaining the process step by step. Uh, we are planning now to do that on June 19th. Uh, stay tuned uh, and we're gonna be um, sending this on our newsletter and, and posting that on our uh, event page um, on our website. And we expect that the first round of applications to be evaluated in September. Um, I'd like to um, bring again that, you know, we are here to help you um, and would like in the meantime, before we, we, we actually post the documents, if you have an idea, if you, you know, we're gonna be sharing this presentation so you can uh, take a deeper uh, look into our goals and outcomes in each of the priorities, uh, please talk to us about our project. So here's my contact details and also Carson's. Um, we, we're, we're really here to, to help you.
and I'll pass on back to Carson so we can do the um, Q&A part of um, the webinar. Awesome, thanks Camilla. Uh, do you mind actually just uh, stop sharing your screen for a second uh, while we sure. do the Q&A? Um, so we have quite a bit of time left for the Q&A, so this is great. Um, maybe Camilla, if you could just uh, quickly start by going over um, maybe giving a little bit of an example what the differences between a, a technology project and a capacity building project what those kind of differences might look like um, and and what our more focuses are um, I think that'll that'll be a good place to start the discussion yeah for sure um, as I mentioned uh, uh, um, in a few slides uh, before uh, technology projects, uh, the, the eligibility is different uh, compared to capacity building. Technology, we're really looking into uh, uh, private companies leading uh, the projects and um, on capacity building, we don't have that restriction. We welcome uh, private companies, but we also, uh, not-for-profits, academia can also be leading uh, projects in capacity building. Um, and technology is really more focused on developing new processes, new uh, technologies, new products. Um, and capacity building, as I said, it's very foundational. It's very, uh, it's what's going to be enabling uh, technology projects to move forward. Great. Thank you. And um, Tiffany, if you want to, I know I see that Tiffany is also on the line. If you want to uh, add on uh, and complement anything, uh, let, let me know. Perfect. Um, so you had mentioned uh, one of the uh, areas of focus is uh, is the Canada brand, and one of the questions that had come through was asking about um, if we were leveraging any of the work that had been done by Canada 2020 um, last fall. Can you just talk a little bit about how uh, PIC has, has been leveraging that work and, and what we've done to um, use that information? Yeah, definitely. Um, we we did work with um, with them on, on that project, and we definitely uh, are you know when we were building our um, international engagement strategy, we took that into consideration. We took the recommendations from the report into consideration. So it's um, it's definitely uh, as I said, you know, our our main focus is not to be. Uh, duplicating efforts or things that are already going on we really uh build upon it so we definitely took that into consideration when building our strategy so thank you um the next question i had found in the chat here was um a little bit back to the um uh, a bit of the consortium building kind of and so they were asking if members would be able to view project submissions um could you maybe talk a little bit about how the intake of submissions might go um, and more importantly, maybe about what we will do to help uh, create consortiums and meaningful collaboration? Yeah, um, for sure. As, as I said, our de very, the details of the program are still being flushed out um, and more information will be on our program guide. But usually um, what happens is um, you so one of the, our first criteria is to submit projects and you must be a PIC member. Once you're a PIC member, you have access to our member portal. That's how you submit projects. Um, it's, um, I can't stress enough that, you know, we don't want to hear from you just after you submit and you press enter, but we want to hear from you before so we can really help you uh, with your project. And, and even, you know, identifying, let's say you have a great idea, um, that's really aligned with our um, strategy and our priorities um, and you you're looking for you know potential project partners we can definitely help you uh, build a consortium so um, I think I don't know if I answer uh, the whole question but um, yeah let me know if not oh that's great um, I, the other part of the question I guess is just a bit about um, you know coming to us to help build those uh, relationships with other consortium members that might strengthen mm -hmm. projects and so um, I guess uh, one thing that we are looking obviously to do is um, build those connections through our network and, and um, yeah. help connect those kinds of companies and institutions together to um, build stronger uh, consortiums um, and yeah. moving into a bit of that consortium discussion one of the questions was um, you know, unlike uh, technology projects, they were curious if uh, academic institutions um, could be leads on projects. Um, can you speak a little bit to that in, in regards to eligibility? Yeah, definitely. Um, as I said, the eligibility, the full eligibility details will be 
um, on our program guide. But as we see it today, yes, um, not for profits, academia, they can be uh, project leads on under capacity building. Perfect. Um, and, and you mentioned this in your FAQs, but it did come up uh, during the uh, Q&A part here. So I just wanted to maybe uh, touch on it again. Um, there were maybe two different questions regarding about um, the type of funding. And so could you maybe explain the reimbursement model a little bit and um, talk about how that um, functions during a project? Yeah, for sure. Um, um, I think um, I will I will not go into a lot of detail right now um, because we're going to be covering that on our um, next session. Um, and again, we're flushing out the, the final details. Uh, but um, yeah, as, as I said before, it's a reimbursement model. So um, we're going to be uh, reimbursing for expenses, for eligible expenses. Um, so um, again, we're going to have the full details on how that's going to work uh, within the next uh, uh, few few days or a few a couple of weeks. Uh, but yeah, it's the reimbursement model, meaning that we are going to be reimbursing eligible expenses. So right. you uh, projects will be spending upfront, and then we're going to be reimbursing them based on what they submitted on our, on the work plan and budget. Great, thanks for that clarification. Um, I guess a little bit more to that is um, people are still asking about the um, you know investment from industry and, and the requirements. And um, I know you had mentioned a bit of the different split um, that would be ideal, but could you just maybe go into depth? Um, you know, a, a little bit further of um, what what we would require, or if it is mandatory that um, investment is from uh, the industry portion of the yeah. project. We we are giving preference to um, industry contributions um, and projects with industry contributions. They are going to be scored higher based on our projects. It's not mandatory, but it's ideal. Uh, we, we are hoping really to um, be funding between 40 and 75% of projects. Um, it all depends on, on the project and how, how the project really scores on our uh, project um, selection criteria. Yeah, great. And kind of the tee off of that is um, somebody had asked if there's kind of a sweet spot for um, the size of projects and, and um, we might not go too much into detail, but could you maybe just give a little bit of uh, information as to um, the size of projects we're looking at and how we might evaluate different sizes of projects? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the way that we're building our process right now um, is that, you know, even the documentation that projects will be submitting uh, to apply, uh, it's going to be, you know, for smaller projects, it's going to be a more of a simplified project plan. And for larger projects, uh, we're going to require more information because it's more, um, it's, you know, higher, higher value, higher risk, etc. So, um, again, we're, we're, we're working on finalizing all the details. Um, in terms of, it's really hard for us to say uh, that we're expecting, you know, projects of this size, of this amount, uh, because it all depends on, on really having the right projects for, um, to grow our sector. So if you have an idea, talk to us, submit your project, uh, um, you know, work with us right from the beginning, and we can definitely help you with that. Um, but you know, to set to set up um, uh, uh, an actual amount that we're looking to invest is really difficult because it all depends on what's what's the project, how how scalable it is. Is it a multi-year project? Uh, how many partners does it involve? Who who is it? You know, uh, how is it going to benefit and bring uh, outcomes to the industry and so on? Absolutely. Um, one question here was. Um, uh, asking if the if they have applied for a technology project um, through our technology program, um, are they still eligible to apply for a capacity building project? And and can it be um, obviously a different project? And will we still accept it even though they're in our technology pipeline? I I, I would say um, we that's that's a very interesting question. I would say talk to us um, about your idea. Um, as I said, you know, the requirements and the eligibility between pro technology and capacity building um, are quite different. Uh, but yeah, we would be very welcoming to listen to your idea and work with you. Um, if it's, uh, if it's a, a, a project that really fits um, capacity building, our priorities, our strategy, um, and our goals and outcomes, uh, we will definitely uh, be working with you to develop that further. 
Awesome, yeah, that's great. Um, I, we definitely would take in uh, projects from, from either side, so that's great. Yeah. Um, we, we haven't really gone through um, you know, a process yet, and so we don't maybe necessarily know the timelines, but there was a question asking um, if we could talk about how long we would expect a, a project to take from the moment uh, an application form is submitted to the moment it's approved. And now we might not have too much details for that, but I, I was also going to maybe just ask for you to touch on, um, you know, how long we have as a mandate and how when uh, projects need to be completed. Yeah. So projects must be completed until uh, March 2023 to 2023. Um, and um, we we have to, um, in terms of timing, we want to do, we want to move. Um, fast and we want to make sure obviously that we get the right projects that they're evaluated evaluated properly um and as i said you know for this call that we are starting they're opening on in the end of june we are um, looking to have um, a first um, evaluation of projects by september so it's not gonna be uh, long until we evaluate and provide feedback and really start working on the project so um please um start working on your uh ideas um contact us uh, get in touch with us so we can really start working um, in, in order for you to apply as soon as possible so you can be considered for um, the evaluation in September. Great. Um, what is the uh, requirements um, for international partners? Um, do Does the projects all have to take place in Canada and can international partners be involved? Yeah, international partners uh, can be involved. Um, we, if there are any expenses uh, occurring outside of Canada, they need to be pre-approved by PIC. Uh, so we need to really look on a case by case, but uh, definitely um, international um, um, organizations can be a part of projects. Great, thank you. Um, we have a question here asking, uh, what are the expected deliverables in capacity building? And, um, I know you went through all of our uh, priority areas, but um, mm -hmm. if, if you're able to sum this up in a, in a one sentence or two sentence answer, uh, what would you say the deliverables in our capacity building program would be? Yeah, I would say that, you know, capacity building, building really uh, enable uh, us to move forward with innovation. Um, and again, there is a strong link with our technology projects as well. Uh, in the end of the day, what we're, 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 we want to position Canada as a global leader in plant protein and in, in the agri-food sector. So I think um, capacity building projects as foundational and transformational to the sector, they will enable that to happen. Uh, and, and again, I think um, it's very important for uh, when we share the presentation afterwards to you for each of you to look at our um, individual uh, goals and expected outcomes for each of the priorities because they they are all working in the same with the same purpose of uh, really uh, putting Canada uh, the best foot forward to really realize the, our realize our agri-food potential absolutely and we will make those uh, this presentation available on our website um, just to go back on a bit of the uh, industry contribution um, uh, to a project in terms of um, in terms of the funding, we we mentioned that there we could fund anywhere in the range of forty to seventy percent, and so um, they were looking for a bit of clarification as to um, what would drive the range. And from my understanding, that would be a lot more focused on what uh, industry would be able to contribute to a project. But could you yeah. expand on on what that might mean? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I think it all depends on what types of projects, who are the partners, um, and and really, it, it's a very good question. So we can actually um, explain it better um, on our program guide. But uh, but yeah, it all it all depends on you know what type of project it is, how 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 much it's aligned with our uh, priorities, and how much will help really advance um, Canada's agri food sector. So I don't have. Uh, a very concrete answer right now, but that's that's a very good point for us to um, also include on our as we as we're finalizing the details of our program. Great. And while we're touching on uh, on that subject, do, is there a overall budget for the capacity building program? Um, maybe you could touch on our budget for for this year and and then the overall budget um, mm -hmm. throughout PICS uh, lifetime. 
yeah, for sure. Um, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, we're talking about about 12, 10 to 12% of uh, PICS um, investment in projects would be on capacity building. Um, this For this uh, year, for this fiscal, we're looking into about $6 million of co-investment. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, and, and overall, you know, about 10 to 12% of uh, PICS uh, budget um, on um, investment uh, in, in co-investment. Great, thanks. Um, this is a little bit of a more specific question to um, the access to capital type uh, priority. Um, they're asking if we would plan to um, have anything beyond education. And so they had a couple examples of, um, you know, direct connection to VCs that are um, already focused in, in, the, uh, pick, in the sector or for PIC mm -hmm. members. Um, could you maybe just touch on uh, maybe a, uh, possibilities for projects and types of connections we can make throughout that access to prior, access to capital priority? Yeah, definitely. Um, we we are um, if if you if you look at our um, goals and outcomes, uh, we want obviously to be a lot bolder than just uh, providing ed education to companies and to VC firms, for example. Uh, so definitely, we would welcome um, your ideas and we would lo love to discuss that. Um, I think it's um, it's we we have lots of opportunities in access to capital, and we're 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 thinking about some other uh, ways of um, uh, developing access to capital in 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 Canada and specifically in Western Canada as well. Great, okay, thank you. Um, we just had a question come in asking if we can email this presentation to participants, and that is definitely something we can do. Um, so I will make that uh, a priority once we are off of this webinar today. Mm -hmm. um, the last question here um, that I had written down was if you're able to just expand on, um, you know, some of the learnings that we had from our, our uh, sessions and, and what drove the uh, key priorities, um, it, it, what was your key finding from that kind of session and, and what did drive those priorities? Yeah, for sure. Um, so the process, and, and I know that not everybody attending this call today uh, participated on our uh, workshops. It they were very small sessions because we really wanted to get uh, feedback uh, and, and, and have a conversation. Uh, we, had, uh, we, we held workshops in February um, across the prairies to really uh, validate our strategy um, on capacity building on our um, seven different uh, priority areas. Um, we what we heard uh, was um, that um, the priorities that were scored uh, the highest or, or considered most important by participants were um, access to capital, uh, regulatory um, infrastructure, and um, also um, access to talent. So these are these are four areas that we see that um, we got a lot of um, comments and a lot of interest um, from participants of those sessions. Um, we also saw that, um, very interesting, that data is always brought up by people who work with data, uh, and there is a big strong linkage between data and all the other priorities. Um, so we need to make sure that that, that is also um, top of mind. I think um, what I would recommend as well is that we posted the um, summary report um, of the sessions and about um, on our website uh, that really touches on, on the key findings. So I really highly recommend uh, you to um, check it out and download it. And maybe Carson, you can put the link on the chat uh, box as well. Yeah, for sure. It can be found uh, under the program tab on our uh, homepage and, and then following to the capacity building page. Um, and yes, I can make that uh, link available. Um, there's a question came in about um, kind of matchmaking service. And um, I know currently we don't have um, a, a very formal matchmaking service, mm -hmm. but um, could you again, just expand on uh, what you and I will be doing to help, um, mm -hmm. you know, that matchmaking process and help uh, make everybody aware of projects and, and, and uh, yeah. help build consortiums? For sure, yeah. So um, as PIC, we have, as I said before, we have about close to 200 members. Um, we are very, uh, um, we, we work on a daily basis with a number of stakeholders across Canada and internationally. Uh, and we, we, we really, across our organization, we have uh, linkages throughout many, many different stakeholders. So definitely when you have um, your project idea, 
come to us um, if you don't have, if you don't, uh, if you cannot identify a partner to work with you, and we can definitely provide you some suggestions, make some introductions, really uh, try to help you to build a, a strong um, consortium. Because for us, it's, um, it's key that industry works together. So we're not really duplicating any efforts. And we, we know that if industry works together, we're gonna get there uh, faster. Awesome. Um, thanks, Camilla. So there are no more current questions in the Q and A. A lot of questions. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> there was a lot, and they were uh, really insightful questions, and they definitely yeah. will help us uh, get through the next stage of this process in, in mm -hmm. finalizing the capacity building program. So um, I guess I would just like to call out to all the participants one last time that um, to for any last minute questions. Um, if there if there aren't any that come in, Camilla, I thank you for taking the time to do this today, and um, I appreciate it. This was uh, a big undertaking. I know that a lot of work has gone into it, and I think we're all really excited to get the capacity building program off the ground. Yeah, definitely, we're very excited. I think um, uh, I'm I'm personally I'm very excited because it's it's really an opportunity to transform our industry with bold projects, um, and I think. Um, yeah, feel free to uh, reach out to us if you have any other questions that were not answered today. And um, we'll be get, getting back to you as soon as we know. And, and again, you know, we're finalizing the, 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 um, our guidelines uh, and we'll be submitting, um, uh, po posting this on our website very shortly. So um, feel free to reach out to us also when we, we, we post everything because we know that there will be more questions. Absolutely. Well, with that said, we will uh, end the webinar there. Thank you, everybody, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you for attending.